Scientific protocols are the rules and processes for evaluating research and advancing science. They rest on a basic set of activities. One is replication. Here, you're taking the data of another study and determining if the same results can be attained, and this is a vital robustness check since it gives greater assurances on data reliability. Additionally, replication can be used to determine data validity, where sampling and selection bias are concerned. Next, there's peer review. The process of having those trained in the substance of the topic and methodology review work is fundamental to the scientific method. What is key in this review process is anonymity of the reviewers and an absence of conflicts of interest and fraternization. There are various ways to do peer review. One method is double-blind reviewing, where both the author and the reviewers do not reveal their identities. This is typical of the review process in academic journals. A second way is single-blind, where the author does not know the identity of the reviewers, but the reviewers know the identity of the author. Consider the National Science Foundation as an example. The NSF uses single-blind process and has several safeguards, including extensive conflict of interest rules. The NSF review process relies in part on review panels. Governed by strict conflict of interest rules, these panels review and deliberate every proposal and make recommendations to accept or reject the proposal to an NSF program director. The panel deliberations usually involve between five and eight reviews for each proposal. Debate about accepting or rejecting each grant proposal involves scholars of various research backgrounds, ensuring that a variety of perspectives are heard prior to making a recommendation to the NSF official chairing the panel. In my experience, the NSF proposal review process is the gold standard of achieving a fair and scientifically justifiable decision. Yet another protocol is outside audits. Some research entities have periodic external audits. This is particularly true for federal agencies like the NSF. Every three years, there is an outside audit to review proposal rejections, acceptances, and NSF program officer justifications for their decisions. Any evidence of bias in final decisions and overall strategic direction of the program can then be assessed. The audit team is comprised of scholars who are the best in the field and have a good understanding of NSF processes. Various NSF officials review the audit, and action can be taken and will be taken if distortions or biases are found. Next, reporting and data distribution. Sticking with the NSF as an example, the NSF requires all principal investigators, PIs, to provide their data one calendar year after the grant's funding period is completed. Generally speaking, failure to report and distribute data is considered an unscientific act and likely to arouse suspicion about the obtained research results. Credibility is seriously undermined without such transparency.